So in this video, I want to talk about hyperammonemia. And if you haven't seen my Corey and Cahill cycle video yet, I suggest you go back and just watch that first. Um, because that'll help you organize what's going on um, in this video and help you apply how hyperammonemia manifests and how it develops um, through these pathways. So if you do remember though from my Corey and Cahill video, um, I'm going to first have you draw a pyruvate, and this is just going to be a really fast review. Right in the middle. Apologies for the handwriting. Remember three arrows. And then moving from left to right, we have alanine. glucose, and then lactate. <clears throat> and again, working over here with alanine and pyruvate, um, create another double arrow. And moving from left to right, remember, you have alpha, keto, glutarate. Um, important metabolite of the uh, citric acid cycle and glutamate and then I'm going to make a single arrow here and single arrow here and then remember these are going to be amino acids And then you're going to have alpha keto acids. So then considering that this is a video about um, too much ammonia in the body, we want to identify our sources of ammonia. So in particular, our amino acids are going to be sources of ammonia. And then these are going to be transported in various forms through this cycle into alanine where it's then processed in the liver um, into the urea cycle so and remember this left pathway is the Cahill cycle and then this pathway over here is Cori so if you look at first aid, you'll see that, and I'm just reading from the text here, that excess ammonia depletes glutamate in the central nervous system, as well as alpha ketoglutarate. And why is that? Well, first, um, in the central nervous system, glutamate, remember that this is actually not part of the Cori cycle, I'm just writing in the blanks here, is converted to glutamine. And to make glutamine from glutamate, you actually need ammonia. And you get other stuff from that. But, but basically the idea is that to make glutamine um, from glutamate, you, get, you need ammonia. So if you have a ton of ammonia hanging around, you're going to shift the equilibrium towards glutamine. So it would make sense that if you shift the equilibrium down towards glutamine, you're going to lose a lot of the glutamate that you have in the CNS. So let me get rid of this so you don't confuse this with the Cori cycle. So similarly, um, it says that you deplete alpha ketoglutarate. And remember that alpha ketoglutarate is an important metabolite in the citric acid cycle. So if you don't have a lot of that hanging around, the citric acid cycle is not going to work. So remember, <clears throat> if you have a lot of ammonia hanging around, you need to get rid of that ammonia and it's going to be converted into metabolites that can be processed um, into the urea cycle for elimination. 
if you have a lot of ammonia, you're basically going to be working down this pathway quite a bit, down this way towards alanine. And then once you get to alanine, you're going to get again, you're going to be in the liver and you're going to shift this back up to glutamate where the glutamate can then be processed into the urea cycle. So if you look at this reaction in particular, you'll notice that as you move from alanine to glutamate, you need alpha ketoglutarate um, to create glutamate. So remember, if you have a lot of ammonia hanging around, you're going to shift this equilibrium towards glutamate. But in the process, you're going to need the alpha ketoglutarate to make the glutamate. So you're, going to, you're not going to have a lot of, of alpha ketoglutarate hanging around because you've had to use it to make the glutamate. So that's why you have a depletion of alpha ketoglutarate. So one, you have a depletion of glutamate in the central nervous system and you have a depletion of alpha ketoglutarate um, basically like everywhere else in the liver and anywhere else where um, you're gonna have uh, oxidative phosphorylation taking place. How do you treat hyperammonemia? Well, one of the sources of ammonia is protein or amino acids. So you simply just eat a low protein diet. That's one treatment. So remember I mentioned that glutamate gets converted into glutamine with the help of a little bit of ammonia. So glutamate is an acidic amino acid. Glutamine is not an acidic or basic amino acid, it's just a polar amino acid. Although ammonia itself is a base. So adding this base to an acid in a way like quote unquote neutralizes um, this acid and it converts glutamate into a more basic substance, but it is not a basic amino acid. It's just more basic. So um, you've been taught like in high school chemistry and um, college chemistry and basically like any biological science or hard science class that you've taken that acids neutralize bases. So that's a way that you can actually get rid of some of the ammonia that's been built up. Um, this is a base. So you want to neutralize it with an acid so it can be eliminated. And that's exactly what we do actually. We can give things like benzoate also known as benzoic acid, phenyl acetate, also known as phenyl acetic acid, and phenyl butyrate. Also known as phenyl butyric acid. And they're all acids and um, these interact with glutamine, ammonia, and they form products that can actually be excreted through the kidneys. And another way that you can get rid of ammonia is, know this one because you're gonna see this all the time on your clerkships, um, is you're gonna see this substance called lactulose. And know how lactulose works because you're probably gonna be pimped on it during your third years. Um, I certainly was. Um, so first off, bacteria in the gut actually create ammonia and ammonia can cross um, into the bloodstream from your gut. So the idea is that you want to say convert this into a polar substance, i.e. ammonium, that has a much harder time crossing crossing over into the blood from the gut. And the way that you do that is through lactulose. So lactulose, it essentially creates an acidic environment within the gut. So you have loads of hydrogen ions sitting around now in the gut, and you are shifting now this equilibrium towards ammonium, shifting it this way. 
because the environment is more acidic so it's it, it's only natural and um rational and logical i guess that if you have a lot of acid sitting around um, a lot of things that are sitting around here are going to pick up a hydrogen ion and become more acidic so since this cannot be absorbed in the gi tract it simply gets excreted and that's it so one you can limit your protein in the diet um, two, you can use lactulose to acidify the GI tract, and this will help eliminate uh, the ammonia once it's converted into ammonium. You can also give other acidic substances like benzoic acid or benzoate, phenyl acetate, or phenyl butyrate. One of the other things that you might see around um, as well is you can just give antibiotics because if the bacteria in the gut are producing ammonia, you can just give some antibiotics to kill the bacteria and hopefully that will help decrease the amount of ammonia that's circulating in your body.